Eleanor Roosevelt once said, Great minds consider ideas. Mediocre minds think about things. Weak minds think about people. Now, before you go rushing to hit the dislike button, just bear with me long enough to see where I'm going with this. Then you can judge me all you like by the YouTube metrics. Sound good? Okay, let's roll. The reason I bring up that quote is twofold. One, it's illustrative, albeit in a derogatory way, of a much larger point I'm going to make in a minute. And two, because it's a line I myself have used in the past to mock those who profess belief in the supernatural, be it gods or nature spirits or ghosts or whatever else. Now, addressing the title, one of the most common arguments I'll hear from religious believers for the existence of God is, in essence, well, how else do you explain morality? to which the answer given by a majority of atheists will be to the effect of pro-sociality, meaning those beliefs and behaviors which are conducive to a cooperative social ecosystem. And had you asked me this question even a couple weeks ago, this is the answer I'd have given you. However, it occurred to me that there's a fundamental weakness in this argument. That is the simple fact that we, as in humans, are not the only social species on Earth, but we are, so far as we can tell, the only religious species on Earth. Why would that be? What makes us uniquely incapable of maintaining our basic social cohesion without appealing to nebulous abstractions? Well, to understand that, I first need you to get to grips with how I understand the concept of logic, which I define as the internal consistency of a phenomenon, which is anything that can be said to exist. This concept then abides by three core principles, symmetry, causality, and locality my definitions for which I'll spare you my wholesale reading of, but I'll leave on screen for your ease of reference. From there, I can get you acquainted with the difference between an abstraction and a phenomenon. In shortest phrase, phenomena are existential, whereas abstractions are indistential. In shorter words, the former can and do exist in, of and by themselves, whereas the latter can only exist in the context of a conceiving force or body i.e. the latter is a projection of the former, which, given the premises of logic and causality, mean that it is as impossible for the latter to generate the former as it is for the former to spontaneously generate itself from nothing. Next up on the old metaphysical docket, the actual argument of morality can't exist without God. Starting from the bottom, we have an assertion that some version of morality exists above and beyond the animalistic survival mechanism hitherto mentioned. Okay. So what they're actually arguing then is that abstract thought exists, therefore so does God, which holds far more water once we have the added context of why are humans religious, but wolves and monkeys aren't. It's because, unlike them, we can think abstractly. So what is abstract thought? Quite simply, it is the process of extracting the definitional essence of a pattern. For example, if I were to ask you to draw for me a picture of a house, what would it look like? Well. If you're a neurotypical person, and also of average artistic skills, meaning minimal at best, you'll put down a triangle on top of a rectangle, with a quaternary window and a door, possibly a chimney with curly smoke coming out. Why is that? It's because, in your mind, that is the essence of the term house. Now, compare that to how an animal conceives the world. To a cow or a horse, both of which are also social herd animals, a man on a horse and a man on foot are two entirely separate concepts. This is why animals, as well as autistic humans, tend to get hung up on what seem to a normal person to be insignificant details. They are, by order of degree, incapable of extracting the abstract essences of patterns from their specific instances. Or, to use a more popular phrase, they're so hyperfixated on the trees that they get utterly lost in the woods and often panic as a result. And now, for those who haven't already started connecting the dots, we come to the penultimate piece of this puzzle. If you ask most people what the oldest religion in the world is, chances are they'll tell you it's Hinduism, which, if we're talking about one still in modern practice, is correct. However, the oldest religion in the world, full stop, is not any of the big brand name ones you're familiar with, and indeed some mightn't even consider a religion at all by our modern conception of the term, animism which, as you can easily surmise by the name, is the idea that the world around us consists entirely of essential spirits rather than of static objects or impartial forces, the quintessential difference between which being that the former can be communicated with, can be spoken to, can be bargained or reasoned with, or else forced or compelled to act in ways that are to your liking, or at the very least aren't to your detriment. 
Now, I've made this point elsewhere, and I'll enunciate it again here. People worship the forces which rule them, and venerate those which they believe empower them. In the ancient world, this translated to gods and magic, respectively. In the modern world, it's the government slash economy and elections slash money. This combined with our tendency to think and perceive the world in terms of social allegiances, as well as a phenomenon called hypersensitive agency detection, which is what its name suggests, leads to us projecting human-like agency onto objects and alien forces. And thus, going back to the quote I used at the beginning, I propose that both morality, insofar as it represents a pro-social cognitive lilt, and a belief in the supernatural are comorbidities of a social primary, subject-oriented mindset. Which, incidentally, would also explain why there's more male than female atheists, agnostics, engineers, and scientists, as they are the more object-oriented head of the homo sapien coin, seeing the world more in terms of tools and obstacles, whereas women tend to be more spiritual, whether religiously affiliated or not, as they are the more socially minded and, for lack of a better word, subjective side of the human race. So, to summarize, my theory is that it's not the existence of abstractions like morality that requires God or religion, nor even the reverse, but that all of these things require the capacity for abstract, empathetic thought, and thus the religious mind is also a pro-social mind, hence the inextricable link between our functional societies and religious models, and the historical inverse correlation between secularization and civil decline. To borrow a line from Terry Pratchett again, evil begins when we start seeing people as things. It is thought that circa one per 100 people in the world is a psychopath, the premier traits of which being a lack of empathy and impulse control. Sociopathy is similar, though it's more simply a viewing of none other but the self as subjects, meaning that, while a psychopath is physiologically incapable of registering the consequences of their actions, either for themselves or others, a sociopath merely views everyone else around them as objects, considering them either tools to be used or obstacles to be removed or destroyed. But as always, this is all just my own speculative opinion. Let me know yours in the usual ways. And of course, while you're there, consider also leaving a like and subscribing, or maybe even becoming a channel member for some exclusive perks, such as instant access to all new videos up to a week in advance of the rest of the pack. Or if you'd like to support me sans the commitment, you could also just leave me a tip or check out my books on Amazon, all of which are available in digital, hardcover, and paperback formats, and some are in the very slow process of being given an audio conversion, though I wouldn't hold my breath on that front if I were you. And with that all said, as usual, until next time, stay safe, stay sane, and remember the wise words of Albus Dumbledore, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live. Peace be upon you.